Are we, are we rolling? We're rolling. We're rolling. Let's not spill on the... Cheers, guys. All right, cheers. Yeah, cheers. Hey, welcome to the Mystery School. Welcome. Tonight, we got uh, Justin Forcioni. He's back. He, hey, how's it going? You were on the number 13 podcast we did. Fuck yeah, I was. Yeah. Um, Dustin's never met you because he didn't no, make it to that I one. No, I was at the Nine Inch Nails, I think, Soundgarden that night. What? You had Nine Inch Nails here? I did. And I was digging them through my sound garden. <clears throat> but no, yeah, sorry I missed that one. I think that was the only one I ever missed. But we had yeah. a lot of people anyway. <laughs> you did, you had a full band. <laughs> yeah, the number 13 is a pretty good sized band. Yeah, it's a pretty good sized band with the addition of me, if you also include um, anybody on keys. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got the jam with Andrew, and uh, you know, I've got the jam Aaron, with yeah. Aaron a couple times. Uh, so Awesome. That was fun. I was hoping Aaron would uh, come out, but... Well, he didn't make it. Mr. Blowers blows tonight. That's a bummer. I love jamming with Mr. Aaron. Mr. Blower. Yeah. I hope he hears this and hey, like, buddy. has a bummer. Say, like, what are you sorry, doing Justin, out there? <laughs> but I'm very disappointed. I barely made it, Aaron, so don't feel bad. When I was looking I was forward, g- really looking forward to this episode, to have you and Aaron on together, and I was expecting it for, oh, uh, I think, a week and a half or, or something. Well, you know what? Now we're going to just cool have dude. fun without him. Yeah, he's fun to hang out with and jam with. He's so he's definitely a good that boy. repeat guest. Well, you know, when I planned this episode, I wanted to do it like with me playing bass and you on guitar because I thought it like thought it'd be fun. And then Aaron, I was talking to Aaron. He's like, oh, "I want to jam." I was like, "Yeah, come out to the one with Justin." And then he, now he couldn't make it. And then I hit up Jeremy, and he was gonna come, but then now he's feeling sick. So oh, so this is kind of like to the original, so the original yeah. idea. Maybe That's an hour cool. ago. Right it's on. like swap back to the power trio. Tony yeah. going on, on bass and yeah, dude, I bet Tony play mean bass. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. We you hadn't played bass um, for a while until we started doing this project, right? Kind of out of bass, necessity. Yeah, you yeah. It up. You know, knowing so many guitar players, it's like I better brush up on the bass. So you know, somebody's got to do it. So I think you can hear that first episode. You can listen back the very first that one where he's just hopping on the bass for the first time What's and that one? which one is that the first bass one ryan moore or no i think so yeah ryan moore episode oh no no torque episode six torque. torque's the first episode bass. six yeah yeah and then ryan moore after. yeah and that was cool with torque my old uh power trio band from just really uh, technical kind of prog rock yeah kind of like prog metal or yeah, something yeah prog, kinda, prog metal like trippy stuff and I mean it, a lot of weird timing it's all like, in drop D and I tried drop D on the bass and I ended up just going back I did better in standard tuning <laughs> speaking it's of, weird having that it's one of my favorite episodes it's uh, weird it's, having that hell which episode is that it's episode Sorry 6 it's yeah. the yeah. Torque, Torque I'm gonna, episode I'm gonna check Jer- that. Jeremy Long okay I'm gonna have to yeah, check that out and we played a couple old tunes um, with t- uh, Tony jamming on the bass, and then we just let loose on most of it, just free form. Um, right yeah. on. We were talking about drop D. Yeah, I was saying it's weird playing. Uh, well, for me, I'm, I'm. It's weird playing anything in drop D, but then playing bass, and you got that that loose E string. It's just kind of. It's just kind of weird. For That's now D. Dude, I know exactly what you're saying because I'm jamming with Ghost Town Rebellion these uh-huh. days, and um, and they play in drop C. Uh huh. I've never played you that, that just in my loose. life. It's all loose. So it's also drop like drop D. It's drop like, D, but a but, whole step. Yeah, full. Uh, yeah. Everything's a whole step down, and then the D and then is the D is two steps down. Yeah, that so, thing's got to be loose, huh? I I got a little heavier strings because of it, so yeah. it mm-hmm. helps. But I'm so not used to playing in drop D's. When Sean Peters is showing me the uh, the chords to all the songs, I don't recognize what chord structure he's doing. I'm like what the f- that's uh-huh. I'm like I know major, minor, and a seventh. Show yeah. me one of those. Like, what is that? <laughs> it's funny though. I'm yeah, the drop D it. ones. They like to add like weird, uh, like some kind of like lower strings. In They're the, like in the power chords on steroids. Yeah. I'm like, what is that? That is not a. a yeah. th- that is a fifth bass, gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, you're doing the three way with Andrew, right? Yes, you I am. You guys have a bass player. We've been jamming with a few different people these okay. days. Jr. Holiday of Zug uh-huh. jammed bass with us at Harlow's uh, earlier this month, uh, uh-huh. early in the month of February seventh at Harlow's, and it was an awesome show. We have uh, the whole show recorded actually, uh-huh. and uh, oh, I should send you some stuff. Maybe you can like mix it or something a little bit better. Yeah, what do you have? Like, what do you have it on? Two tracks or nope, have- just one. Uh, a friend of ours, Aaron Hoberman, had uh, had this device. He had 
out and he sat sat there the whole show with it uh-huh. holding and he sent it he put it on soundcloud and sent me the raw files and right. said uh-huh. it's gonna sound yeah. better next time i was experimenting is the first time uh-huh. i used it but, yeah uh, you could send it to me i could try to like not a lot you can do with that but you could maybe it'll use... make it louder oh yeah i can definitely get it loud <laughs> yeah but... that's probably the only thing that could be done with it but you could uh, use a little compression and eq right on um and Probably people who are good with a computer could do a lot more, but well, I'll I'll uh, I'll send you them just so you can hear them too. Maybe yeah. you can mess around with them. And send me what you're doing. Yeah, right on. I could uh, also make you like a like a pretty high quality MP3. Uh-huh. I've been using like these uh, variable bitrate MP3s that like kind of high or like low or like low compression rates, so they're not that compressed. That sound pretty good, but they're still not massive files. Be oh, right like, on. Be good. You could put on like the internet or something if you wanted to. That'd be sweet. But. Yeah, I'm gonna probably throw that on the. I should probably do that. A lot more stuff. Oh, um, Sean, uh, Sean Navin of Ghost Town Rebellion jammed with Three Way uh, uh-huh. for a show. Oh, that's cool. Uh, jammed a song, a couple songs. We jammed with the fiddle player. Oh, Jam- cool. We jammed. So with- d- 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 you, do you? How do you like it as a two piece? Two piece. We've been doing two piece more often. A little bit. Is that something yeah. you see um, progressing into? More full time, you know, you like uh, featuring a third piece, or do you see an, another member solidly in the grouping? You know what, it's solid right now. We're we're kind of liking keeping it free range motion and having people on stage with us. It kind of makes us like a like a legitimate yeah. three way. <laughs> Who's having a three way yeah. with us tonight? You guys are swingers. Like um, we played a show at um, uh, Cafe Colonial uh, a couple weeks ago and. It's it's kind of a cool place. I mean, it's, it was Jessica Wabbit's and Vanessa's birthday party, so there was a lot of friends there. Uh-huh. And uh, we couldn't, because of politics, we couldn't promote it as a three-way show, so we promoted it as a Justin James Forchoni solo Why? show. Why couldn't you promote it as a three-way like show? Powerhouse, Harlow's, and oh, yada, yada yada. We had, had too a many little, gigs. Too many something. gigs that yeah. month. And, and, you know, but we wanted to do it. So I did it solo and started it out. I played a couple songs solo. And uh, oh, right on. and then Andrew jumped on stage and we played a song, and then in the middle of that song, I I met we met uh, Sinjin who's a who's a fiddle player, and he plays for uh, the Ooh. what's the band One Eyed. Uh, damn it, they're a they're a local uh, a bluegrass band One Eyed something or others, but his name's Sinjin. Okay. And we just met. I just met him 15 minutes before mm-hmm. he jammed with us on stage. <laughs> He was like, I was like, hey, we were supposed to touch base, but we didn't. Sorry about that. Nice yeah. to meet you. Can you jam? He's like, I totally can jam. Like, sweet. Mm-hmm. I'll call you. Call him up on stage. I say, the song's in G, and he rips it. And you know what? I'm going to have to call him because that's that's something. That's a nice that's, element to add. That's some things I want to do for the three-way, I think. Like, you know, yeah. keep it a... Keep it brand new, open, because uh, Joel's in the three-way. It's it's different, you know. I feel it's sentimental with it. Like we're he didn't leave on bad terms. He left on very good terms. And mm-hmm. It's like we, it's not the same without him. It seemed like Andrew really missed him. I really miss him. Yeah, like you guys did. Like yeah, was... we all miss him. But you know, it was uh, it wasn't sudden. You know, yeah, it, it kind of eased its way in, so it was good. Well, and uh, yeah. but yeah, I think the three-way now is gonna be. I, I, we're performing a lot uh-huh. and every show is different. So I think the thing is it's either going to be a two piece or it's going to be a clusterfuck like, like Zug or something where every show I play a song solo <laughs> and then everyone comes up on stage and it becomes crazy. Who knows? Uh-huh. But it's like a rebirthing of it though. Almost you strip it down to the bare roots and then you can rebuild those you know, the elements you want around it so that's pretty neat you, it's pretty neat it's like starting fresh yeah and we're writing new songs now we're not really doing many old three-way songs like we're doing jams cover tunes and i'm writing all these new songs and we're gonna make a we're gonna make a, an album and it's gonna be different nice all right do you uh do you adjust your amp and stuff different playing the two-piece what i've been doing in two-piece i've been uh st- Doing using a ABY switch and uh-huh. uh, plugging into my combo uh-huh. and then plugging into a mini Ampeg, uh-huh. uh, like fifteen inch amp? speaker, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. and uh, running it up. like both stereo at the same time to give it a little extra oomph. Uh-huh. I'm playing very very loud, so that's kind of what's uh-huh. been different in the two piece. Uh-huh. Sometimes and when we have a bass player jump on, sometimes I click off the Ampeg. Does the bass amp get the same pedals? 
Yes, everything. Full, full so same. far, everything. I've j- it's the first time I've tried this rig. And uh-huh. I've done... You play with Loop Station at all? Not yet, but I was thinking about it. What's your go-to effect? If you could only bring one. Let me take, can I take a guess? Hmm. Ooh. It's probably not right, but hmm. is it a wah? It was either... I was about I to either say delay. a wah or a, or a fuzz. Uh-huh. Fuzz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you do a lot of fuzz? I like the fuzz. It's, what do you use? What fuzz? I got um. Right now, my rig is a MXR uh, 108 carbon copy fuzz or classic analog fuzz. It's a carbon copy. That's a fuzz. Yeah, it's. A, it's I thought that was a delay or. Oh, the no. carbon copy is the delay. I have that. Oh. Sorry, I got oh. a little confused. It's a 108 silicon fuzz. Is it MXR? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's based off of the fuzz face, uh-huh. and I, I, I used to have a big muff. American and yeah. then it broke and so then I had a black Russian big muff what happened to the one that broke I stomped it too yeah, hard it too many times sturdy. and the switch don't work very well anymore uh, do you still have it yeah you could totally fix that for like, I know I can that's like why I still have bucks. it yeah like where can I get it fixed well you just gotta buy the switch and then open it up and resolder it in there all right all right you buy the switch at like mammoth electronics You're like three four bucks mammoth you're gonna have to send me the, I'll remember yeah, and if you can't do it, you can bring it over and I'll help you do it. Right on. Sounds good, because I love that, that muff back. Yeah. If the switch just broke, that's an easy fix. Yeah, I know it's an easy fix. I knew it was an easy fix. That's why I'm like, not. I wasn't too bummed about it, but... Let's pull the old switcheroo. Bo. Oh, I had to... Uh, in the- well, actually, I don't know. Actually, if it might not be a true bypass. It might be a different switch, but either way, we'll figure it it's out. It's the one that's... It looks weird. We'll uh, figure it out. Yeah. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Oh, and that bla- the Russian muff was Joel's, so I gave that back. <laughs> Did you like the mail order? Was that one different? Do you like it better or anything? I like the American better. Well, they were different. Like uh-huh. I for the for on the album, the three way album, I used the uh, Russian muff for Slow Girl, and the American muff for every other song that I needed a muff for. What uh, what would you like say sounds different about them? Well, I had the uh, Joel's one was the newer. Um, black Russian. It wasn't the super like tank one. Uh huh. I think it, I think it's supposed to be have the same guts as the uh, as the bass big muff, just without the compression or something. Hmm. Um, it wasn't as it wasn't as fat. Uh huh. It was tinier, which is pretty cool. Um, and the tone knob really boosted the volume. Uh huh. That's two things. The I tone knob? Noticed. Yeah, the tone knob. When I crank the tone knob, the volume would just p- p- spike. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know if that was a weird, like, circuit thing going on in there. Some, but If it was, like, messed up or something? Yeah, but it worked for Slow Girl. Uh-huh. Like, but I threw a bunch of effects on Slow Girl. I, I had a, I had the wah on all the time. Uh-huh. All Up the or way down? Down. down. Sometimes I, sometimes like, I would rock it, like, for, like, a little, like, rock sound, uh-huh. but it was always down, and I had the had the whammy on um octave low the octave down octave down and uh the big muff a, no, a boss overdrive and uh you just had it, everything on basically everything on the yeah. whole song and then just <laughs> manipulating the whammy uh-huh. <laughs> when you recorded were you doing multiple guitar tracks on the songs sometimes yeah yeah or some of them just one good one track was just one uh-huh. guitar track I think I overdubbed a solo. You, um, were you guys tracking live? Yes. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, we did. Uh, we we uh, we didn't do scratch tracks. Uh-huh. We uh, went in and sometimes we would perform to a click. Sometimes we wouldn't, but we'd play live, and that was the rhythm track. And uh-huh. if we did any overdubs, it was over that. Uh huh. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. It was pretty cool. We liked it. It was a lot. We we rehearsed a lot for it. So yeah, tightness was a was a factor we needed to be tight it can be hard to get in the groove sometimes with uh when you're just playing along with the track as opposed to everybody playing together you know i'm gonna do that next week i've never done it before just go record uh over the track i've never yeah i'm gonna that's how we're recording you did it for the solos and stuff yeah but what i did for the solos is that we didn't punch in we played the whole song and i played the whole song through and then we took that uh-huh. piece for the solo so what are you doing for ghost town are you playing on the, like we're, the whole thing no they're uh 
Andrew's going in on Saturday to record drums, and I'm going in after to record guitar. But uh-huh. these are all going to be scratch tracks, and uh-huh. everyone's going to do the scratch tracks separately. And then that seems weird. We're going to do yeah. our real track over the drums after that, or something. It's going to be very um, opposite style of how the three way album was recorded. Yeah, it seems like people normally record scratch tracks all together, and then they like do it after yeah it that's what weird. i thought we were gonna do when he said scratch tracks but that seems weird to do to be sitting there doing scratch tracks by yourself well yeah huh? whatever you know sean went to school i'm sure he's got a he's got a method to it he's got a method to his madness i'm I'm interested to see what it will sound like i mean i like the the single uh uh-huh. poverty ridge that he did uh-huh um, i'm not on that track though but. no are you in the band yeah i'm in the band i'm on the uh there's a banjo tune Shit, he changed the name twice. I can't remember the name of the song. 1843. No, it's uh, Murder uh-huh. Murder on Grand Island or something. They're all about to have to do with Sacramento area stories. Uh-huh. Um, I play banjo on that. No, the ban- the banjotaro. The <laughs> oh, gabanjotaro. Six string? Yeah, six yeah. string gabanjotaro. Yeah. Guitar Joe. I'm on that <laughs> track. He's still mixing that one. <laughs> cool. When's that going to come out? Fuck if I know. Yeah. <laughs> what What about uh, three way? Three way. We're. St- I'm writing, working on. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna have something by the by the end of the year. I'm not. I can't not release at least an EP. We uh-huh. did a. I, my goal is I want to have new, at least some sort of portfolio of music at least once a year. I'm working for twice a year. That would be sweet. Well, you got this podcast. I know, yeah, right? This is something. This will be something. This will yeah. be a part of it. I got. I want to have. I need to have something by April. Uh huh. Yeah, I need to have something by April because that'll be a year. Yeah. So. so what are you looking to get out of tonight then? I'm planning kind of a lot old. of projects, a lot of planning, a lot of preparation, this rehearsal. Is, this is just fucking a blast, man. Yeah. That's what I'm have planning on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're you're definitely Let a loose. person that loves jamming. I know that for sure. I love jamming, yeah. man. Yeah. So, you know, it's when you best, play with huh? different people, some people are into jamming some people it's it's not exactly their deal you know some people are more like song oriented or whatever but i know you like to just just get on your guitar and get going huh? that's how i learned how to play I grew well, then up you go see three-way and there's always like these 10 minute skinner jams or whatever <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> you guys do the long i remember one time at uh i went over to the beach hut deli and you were doing like a 10 minute solo and you were at one point you were on the bar. Stand, dude. You were standing on the bar playing guitar. Yeah. <laughs> well, dude, we were, we were playing like six hours that night. We have to fill time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are you going to do? Jam for 10 minutes. Like we got, we got 15 songs in six hours. I remember the first three way show. We actually had 30 songs on the list. Originals. Uh huh. We don't play all of them. Uh-huh. now but um we had a whiteboard on stage with us and uh a- as we were playing them we'd like pull out the whiteboard and be like so which one do you guys want to hear next You've n- this is our very first show but uh how about this one do you like this one like yeah that one sounds cool okay and he had to race with my finger and, okay we're the only band all night it was at maryland's and we're the only band all night so we got this is our list uh we don't know what order we want to play <laughs> was that the one andrew went to <laughs> yeah andrew went to that one uh-huh and uh, that was it. It was our it was our first promoted show, but it was our second show that Andrew saw us at. He came oh, to okay. our very very first show. That's so much fun. We always talk about this every time we get together. <laughs> yeah, he talked about it uh, when he was on the podcast. Really? Yeah. It's a cool story. That's a really cool story, though. Yeah. He uh, saw the three way at the very first show and introduced himself and said, "Hey, you, I really like your guys' sound." I'm like, thanks, man. He's like, "I'm a drummer." Oh sweet! Come our ne- our real show is tomorrow at Maryland's, and he's like, "I'll be there." And he was there, and uh-huh. and I took his number, and and then you uh, had a drummer then, yeah, Micah, uh-huh. Micah Eccles, uh-huh. and he quit and uh, called Andrew, and now we're best but friends. How many years has it been? Three, three in February years with Andrew. Yeah, I met Andrew in January. And we uh, awkwardly asked him to be in the band 
uh-huh. in February. Love uh-huh. band. Like, hey man, hey man, we know you like played uh, did, did you uh, three or four shows with us? You want to be in the band? <laughs> I, I thought you'd never ask. Oh, he played. A, he played a gig with you before you guys had like him as four an official member. We had like five or six shows booked, and we we're like, in the, yeah, the drummer quit. So you want to like help us out?" And he's like, "Sure, man." And he learned uh-huh. all the songs and played four shows with us. And then we're like, "So uh, you kind of like uh, played a bunch of shows with us? So uh, you want to be in the band?" He's like, "Yeah, man." I remember we. I was played... waiting for you to say something. <laughs> the first time I met you was when we all played together at the Beach Hut. Yeah. That Are you sure? Fun. I thought I met you. Um, uh, oh, yeah, when we all, yeah, that was yeah, the first time I met at you. At my old house. Well, I saw the 13 play a bunch of times. Oh, did you? Yeah. You, bef- before you knew Andrew? You just saw us? No, but well, after I met Andrew, I'd go see the 13 oh, but- before we ever jammed. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think the first show that, that Three Way and Ghost Town, I mean, not Ghost Town, Three Way and 13 played, it was Beach Hut. And yeah, that yeah. was that uh, was that was when I remember meeting you for the first. And time. And then I after thought, that, but... I think you guys asked me to jam on a couple t- on, on some shows with you guys. After that, yeah, yeah. You... But I've definitely met you, and like I went. I think uh, that was the first time I went to your house and like, uh-huh. smoked a bowl with you. Yeah, I don't feel. I don't. I guess recall meeting you before that, but it's possible. You know, you meet people at a show and sometimes forget. It was definitely at a show. Yeah, that was when I first met you. I remember w- watching you rock that at bl- that red SG. <laughs> yeah. And I was going like, oh. That's it? Just, uh. uh. <laughs> After I went to the bathroom. <laughs> that show was funny. Aaron fell over. Remember that? Oh, was that at uh, Blue Lamp? No, well, no, I'm talking about the uh, beach hut one. Oh, yeah. Everyone just was pretty drunk, and uh, yeah, Aaron fell over. He almost spilled the beer all over my oh. pedal board. Oh yeah, he spilled beer all over. But he, he spilled guess. the. Be- he was right over my pedal board, and then my buddy Vaughn was like, "Hey, Aaron, come over this way." And then right after that, he dropped the beer all over the dance floor, and yeah, it was like, <laughs> he was out, like man. slipping, trying to get up, and so <laughs> I don't know. He was having a good time. His mom was there. His girlfriend was there. <laughs> He's like, "I am not driving." <laughs> Uh, yeah, you got to be, you know what it was is we got, he was just giving us pitcher after pitcher of uh, some strong ass beer that we weren't prepared for, you know? Yeah. If you don't know a beer is like whatever, eight and a half or like 9% and you just get drinking on it. Dude, it's like those uh, mixed drinks. <laughs> you got to be careful with those mixed drinks, especially the ones with those cranberry sauce in there. You're like, oh, oh this yeah. is a soda pop. It's a fun drink. No way. Mm-mm. You'll miss Dr. Dre, I swear. You'll be in the bathroom being like, oh, dude. <laughs> you missed Dr. Dre in the bathroom. That was, my, that was the last time gin, I drank mixed too drinks. Too and juice. That was a couple years ago. I'm like, none of that anymore. <laughs> yeah, we like I, to get I hoppy missed, around I, I missed here. I Dr. Dre the have their place, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 uh, yeah, it's own vibe. I like to, if I had to pick a hard alcohol, though, I like I like gin. It's kind of the green bud high. I, I really would say. like gin. It's kind of happy, bubbly. Gin and tonic yeah. with a lime or a lemon. I like yeah, like uh, gin and sprite with some lime. Yeah. Ooh, gin and sprite. It's like even a, better. It's well, it's got the juniper sprite. in it, you know, which is like a pine tree looking bush thing. But what is it about stuff that is kind of piney that is gives you kind of like the happy mood? You know, thinks like, me about camping. Well, like the. Mm. Yeah. Well, like really hoppy beers. Do you ever? Do you, yeah, like, you, it's true. It's the I piney. noticed, like you know, they kind of. They kind of, you know, give you a, a different kind of buzz. Then weed is uh, got the piney flavor. All something huh. about that piney flavor. Maybe there's some certain tannin or, or oil that secretes that piney smell that is in a similar family that has an effect on, you know, our neurotransmitters in it's a, a, man a similar thing. way. It's a man thing. I don't know, man. It's the wilderness. Pine. Yeah, get, just getting is. back into nature. Yeah. You just feel like you're in the woods. Yeah, man. You, that's, mm. what you, that's when you said pine, just the word pine. Oh, yeah. So, uh, all right. So what do you want to jam on tonight? We got the, I got the sheet of, of the chords. I'm know? totally down to do that song. That. Yeah. You got a couple songs you'd like and to then, jam out? And then, yeah. Do you want to? We do, always do like you, when people bring in. Shit, you know, they're sure, out. I can totally. I, I got to pull something out of my ass. We'll totally think about it. I had nothing planned, actually. Uh, Neither do we. <laughs> well, I had that. I had well, well, we have planned, some but. some letters written on. Piece one of thing paper. I wanted to do. I don't know if you do one. I thought it'd be cool if we do a slow blues song. Do you oh, do any slow blues? Slow blues, like 
I can I can do A. But do I you can do, do, you do any e. song? Do you have any songs that are yours that are like a slow blues or no? I got something for you. I think you got I got something I haven't jammed with the three way. And uh, wait, wait a minute. You know. Yeah, I got a, I got something. Yeah, I got something for yeah. you. You got some rabbits in I'm just feeling like trying to slow blues. I got this tune. We normally Jeremy's perfect for that too. He would have. Yeah, slow we're, blues. I'm 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 all down to kick it slow. Yeah. I love slow tunes. We'll do some fast too, but, okay, I, but I just figured like I wanted to do some rocking yeah. for sure, but I wanted to do like one slow blues. I thought you'd be a good guy to do it. We usually yeah, try to uh, <coughs> kind of st- stay slightly away from the blues because it's just kind of like so ingrained. It becomes in. a crutch. Uh-huh. Well, it's just like I I play so like blue like kind of blues based stuff, and so many people. I don't know. It's just really easy to get in there, so we try to we try to drift slightly away from that. But tonight I just want to go straight for it, for for one song. Interesting. Okay, I think I got one for you. I would love some of that. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the Euro. thanks for the warning. Euro trip, yeah. And then uh, yeah, I got all those. I wrote a bunch of different chords out, uh, chord progressions, and we got a new theme song we're working on. Yeah, we got a new. Uh, We haven't tried it at all yet. We have something. No, we tried it. We did last episode. We did one song, and uh, I liked how it turned out. And I was like, that should be the new theme song because we we actually have. Was it a song or a jam? A jam. It's a well, one jam. It was one of the chord So we haven't too. tried it. We just played it last time, so I don't even rem- remember it. I probably recognize the notes, but w- it's going to be a big winger. Right on. Yeah. I'm totally down. This yeah. is all yeah, just Yeah, so we're trying improv. to incorporate that into the new theme song. Cool. Is we're going to pass be- the old one. We've done the old one like over 10 times. We're probably about 10 times. Almost. This is episode... 17. <laughs> but we haven't... Uh, Depending on the number. We uh, haven't played... The- we didn't play... The- well, we didn't even have a theme song. For the first five. And they were like, this song that we've played a couple times, that's the theme. I think it came to be on the duo episode. Yeah, it, it happened because I got the organ, yeah. and, I, and I was trying to like write something to play on the podcast. And so and then ever since then. It's going to be a little funky, funky. But we will do the organ. old theme tonight, too. Well, like the, This may, may be the last time we do it. Transition them to in, in, the old into the new. You guys teach me. Yeah, yeah, we'll teach you. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Out with the old, in with the new. I wrote it down. It's on the page. There we go. Yeah. So. Well, cool. I mean, it's fucking welcome. Thanks, Justin. man. It's awesome to meet you. Thank you. It's a pleasure and, uh, meeting you're you. A glowing spirit, and it's looking forward to jamming. I, oh, I can tell I'm so, already. I'm so stoked. It's gonna be a fun night. It's been a long day. I'm still in my work clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You you just like jetted right over here. Look at that. Uh, nice I had dedication. to. I hit up my dad. I had to pick up the truck. Went to the studio. Oh my gosh, there's a couch there for my new place. Okay, I got to pick <laughs> up the couch. Oh, dad's hanging out with R- Doug from Oleander. Come on, dad, we gotta go. Oh, son, you should have said something. I'm like, I just did. <laughs> and dad's done for the night. I'm like, dad, you you sure you want to come hang out with us? He's like, I'm glad you said something. Cause no, son, I don't. Well, good thing it's semi on the way. Okay, here we go. Yeah, did your your dad had no idea you were coming here? Oh, I, I dropped by his place. I told him I was going to drop by, uh-huh. and I, when I dropped by, I said, "Hey, dad, I need to borrow the truck." And he's like, "No problem." And he's like, and I said, "Hey, uh, I'm going to go do some music stuff. You want to hang out? It's been a while since we've hung out." Uh-huh. And he was like, "Hell yeah!" And he got his shiny shoes on and got his medicine box, <laughs> got ready, and he's like, "Son, I'm just going to turn on the lasers and sm- smoke a joint and." Uh, <laughs> Go to sleep. Thanks for saying something. I'm like, okay, good. Yeah. Well, hey. That would have been our first uh, person to bring their dad with them on the podcast. Dude, if there's anybody that's going to bring their dad, it would be me. He's the coolest dad ever. <laughs> yeah, You've met my dad. You've met my dad. I met him like once. I, I, like, I've never really talked to him or anything, but I they heard call he used him, to be they, a model, right? They call him Jim Dad. Wasn't he a model? <laughs> yeah, he did that. That was his job for his life until he had me. What is it? Uh, the stretch marks. You ruined marks? his body. You ruined his body. <laughs> <laughs> he gave birth to me. <laughs> my, well, my dad's gonna be a guest on here. Eventually. No, he just wanted. He, he wanted to be a dad to be. after that. Maybe we could get yeah. a dueling yeah. dads, like two dads on. Your dad doesn't play though, does he? Oh, he was just no. I tried to teach him bass for a little while. He wanted to learn bass, but you know, he's he he he, he was like he had an, he was like a kid, kind of like he had interest for a couple weeks, and then <laughs> now the game's on, son. <laughs> My fingers hurt. <laughs> yeah, well, what are you going to do? 
Are you guys ready to get to it? I'm fucking ready. All right, jam time. Yeah.
Orleans Way to mark a mom on the evergreens They should log cabin made of earth and wood Lived a country ball named John to be good But never ever learned to read or write So everybody can play the guitar Just like it's ringing a bell Go, go Go, Johnny, go, go, go Go, Johnny, go, go, go Go, Johnny, go, go, go Go, yeah But Johnny be good He used to carry his guitar in a gunner's sack Sitting by the tree among the railroad tracks And hidden down the teeth underneath the shed Something to the rhythm that the driver's made Coming by the miles around and say to mine down and join a country ball and play go 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 Johnny go 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 Johnny go 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 Johnny go 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 Yeah 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 Johnny be good Yeah right
It's going down. That was so much fun. Yeah, yeah. it was totally fun. It was. I had a great time, as usual. <laughs> but, I mean, you have some people you're fond of. Oh, you shit. Know, and some sounds you're fond of. And I, I was fond of tonight. Dude. I'm fond of you. Thank you. You were cracking me up in there at the end when we ended. You were, like, all so pumped. I was so pumped. <laughs> we had some energy going You're like, in there, huh? I know, I know why you guys do this. This is an excuse to jam. This is like, <laughs> so, you guys are clever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, you make, you, you totally get people like, oh yeah, we're going to do a podcast, but then you just fuckers, you guys just jam and it's just fun. Like, cause you could always like call your friend like, hey, you want to come over and jam? They're like, ah, oh, I'm busy. But like, hey, you want to come over and do a podcast? Wow. That sounds like, like I'm do, like, I'm actually doing something like. It's official. I'm doing yeah. work. I'm yeah. working. <laughs> the. The pressure helps too, in a, in a way, right? Like, yeah, it totally does. Are you kidding me? That yeah. was like it kept me like. Uh, Keeps you on your toes. You, you know, know that was like good. It felt so good. It's Thank like you for. You you feel pretty comfortable because we're just in a garage jamming. And I, and I totally like, just realized that I'm actually like the guest tonight. Aren't you I? You are the special yeah. guest. Yeah, I, I didn't yeah. know I was like the special guest. I thought like maybe you got your buddy here. Like you're here every week. I'm, I'm so sorry, week. man. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm a I'm a fan Everybody's now. Everybody's sick of me by now. So you're the special guest. Yeah, you're like the. Uh, we feed, we're just the background. We're the house band. We know? try to like adopt like adopt Shit, or man. adapt to the style of the guest. In thanks a way, too. for thanks for jamming with me, guys. Thank that, you. I had so much fun. Yeah. Can I call you guys for like a show, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Of course, yeah. yeah. It's cool. It's, it's all about like, making new new contacts. and. Uh, it'd be funny if uh, people were hitting us up like, we need a backing band. Let's get the mystery school. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mystery <laughs> school. So-and-so in the mystery school. I mean, yeah, Tony and I have done this um, basically almost every week for the last... Like every Almost other week, two years, yeah, maybe yeah. hey, steadily. For, I know you guys, you guys have been doing this for a while. We've been doing this show for about a year, steady, and we've we've hung out and jammed uh, steady probably about almost two years now. Maybe yeah, at least every other week. You know, sometimes twice a week, sometimes once Dude, a this, week. This shit's sometimes. gonna get huge. And watch, I'm gonna get on record right now, and this is awesome. I had you so think much fun. It's we? It's gonna be it's cool. Not found huge. A niche. There's it's not gonna, huge yet. I'll tell put you. Put it on like yeah. some like uh, websites like in like Russia or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, hit up th- hit up the image boards. You think people who I'm gonna don't, totally troll don't this speak shit. our language will like the like Chris Sanchez his band dude, they he probably like it better. <laughs> his band Cold Beer they're huge, they're big in India. They get downloads for ringtones. Yeah. That's so what he's yeah. But who knows? We, One we did day you're going to meet some guy and he's like, I learned to speak English dude, listening we just, to the mystery school. Dude, we just made like, <laughs> we just made the theme song for some sitcom in like Madagascar. I they mean, got TVs there. That's they, all, every artist's dream, I guess, for something that you're doing for fun, just for your own enjoyment to lead to, to free up more time to, to do this and put more effort into it. I guess that's what the cool thing would be if it made some sort of income at least to pay for itself or to pay for you to not have to work as much, maybe to pay for you to not have to work. It would Who just knows? be That's weird. That's the dream. That's the dream. Know? It would just be weird to ha- get maybe. emails from people that are like, I like this podcast. That would be, that, you know. It's hard to expect like, people dude, to like something email that you, you like. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, Everybody can't. who's come on has had a really good time. Yeah, it's a fun experience every night for well, us. This is my second guests. time, but like, fuck. Yeah, the first time we did the band thing, which is a little different. Yeah, we did the band thing. Like, we played our songs, and that was fun, though. Yeah. Like, this, I wasn't even exp- – it was just – you know, it's like I felt like I – I felt like I just got out of, like, a really good mo- – the movie theater at a really good movie. Uh-huh. You know, like, I just – I'm, like, going the, with the boot flick with all my friends, and we're leaving with the empty popcorn bag. We're like, oh, guys, that was so good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you guys bring the popcorn bag with you. Huh? Did you oh. see Superman? He was all like, I didn't see Superman. But did you see Spider? I didn't see Spider Man either. Fuck. Did you see The Birdman? I'm gonna watch that this weekend. What's up that movie? Have you ever seen that movie, The Birdman? No, but it like won the awards, right? Yeah, uh, I haven't seen it yet. But my pop Scott got it on DVD. I saw Whiplash. You see that? Oh, I have that one's on the list too. He's got three movies. Whiplash is one of them. Birdman's another one, and this other one's the sci-fi dude with the dude and the mustache. You know, I'm vague. Don't worry about it. Yeah, the mustache, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. Hey. You know, it looks like a good movie, but I can't remember the name of it, so don't even try to get it out of me. But Whiplash. Oh my God, is that good or what? Because it's yeah, it's like a, it looks so fucking good. Part of my French. 
Okay, tonight you were playing my rig. How'd you feel about it? That was a sweet rig. I love playing. I love playing new. How'd you like the feel rigs? of his rig? Did it feel nice? Dude, I felt like, I, you know what? I had to like be careful because you know it's like it's it's Tony's rig. Like I'm so used to just crunching on my on my stuff. You know, I told you I broke my big muff. Well, it I had, had to the, be. I was gentle with did that. Did you thing. notice the um, the it nut so lube on buttons. it? Did that you I notice the, the nut lube on it? The what? That's the on, nut the, lube. on the telly. There was nut lube on the telly. Felt good. Yeah, good. Yeah. Thanks, bro. I think so. Thanks it's for a, the nut lube. It's an all-star. Yeah, Show there's stopper. no mine. Mine was dry. Tony's was pretty <laughs> lubed up, ready to go. I really, it felt really good. Did so? Did you? Um, in thinking back through your jams, what do you think about when you jam? My genitals? What? You, yeah, you were thinking about. <laughs> I think about my genitals when I jam. No, I don't know. <laughs> I was thinking, to be honest, like I was, my mind was wandering about thinking, like, oh my gosh, these guys are doing this, and this is. I told you, like, this is just. A, I, that's what I was thinking when we were jam. Like, this is such a good excuse to jam. I'm just like thinking to myself, and you know, dazing off and forgetting what I was thinking. Were you thinking and, like, how can I get a podcast? <laughs> what do I gotta do? How can I? What do I need to get what a podcast? What do I need to do to get a podcast? Okay, I need one of these like s like XLR snakes. Those things are expensive. You want to do it outside? We uh, well, we that. like you know we've evolved this thing, got like different stuff. Dude, unification's where it's at. We used to carry out this, a little digital recorder outside or do this it inside. This whole thing started, permitting. yeah, on mainly using just like an iPhone in a mixer kind of a thing, you know. <laughs> yep. And then eventually we just got more and more stuff. Like a lot of it just like I got this snake from Aaron, just like have people who like buddies who got stuff laying around. And we got a pretty good setup now. It actually it's been works a collaborative good. effort. Dude. I heard a lot of collaboration Kudos. going on tonight. I mean, I heard a lot of lead riffs from all three of us where we took control of, it. Of, of the speeding lane and we followed, we got in line and, um, yeah, we were grabbing the reins. Everybody grabbed the reins. I, I think, love it. And, um, I love it. Well done, boys. Yeah, that's well, fun. Yeah, Another fun experience. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. Mystery school. Hold yeah. on, we're not done yet. I just I barely got started on this beer. No, we're not done. We're not done at all. You got any cool stories? What are you listening to these days, music-wise? Dude, same thing that I said last time. I said that was only that was when Nickelback. I was really getting to our yeah Nickelback. Yeah, they're Dude. hardcore right now. Dude, I've been working four days a week, and so I listen to the radio a lot because I work in cars and I drive a lot, uh -huh. and I don't have CD players in them or CDs. They're used car dealership, and uh, I'm listening to ninety one point five, the El Camino station, and ninety point three, the Davis College station. Uh -huh. And sometimes when my head hurts and I'm like sick of all that shit, sometimes ninety four point seven, sometimes ninety eight rock if I catch something good, but. Uh, 88.9, the classical station. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I, for the past two days, I put that on today at work, and I was like, oh, my headache is gone. No, but I'm, like, really into R.L. Burnside these days. And, dude, I'm going to cover this tune with the boys. You guys should join. You guys should come along. <laughs> We're going to fucking rock this shit if we get on Concert in the Park this year. We're going to do uh, uh, Someday Baby by R.L. Burnside. It's uh -huh. an old, old song. The song... Say someday, baby, you ain't gonna trouble for me anymore. Uh -huh. Only in the R.O. Burnside version, there's a hip hop section that goes, Get, 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 goodbye, girl, get a get gone, skit gone, had a great time, got me pretty good, got a good thing going, got more than you gave, goddamn, now I give it to you, girl, you got game. Goodbye, girl, better get gone, skit gone, had a great time, got to be pretty good, had a good thing going, got more than you gave, goddamn, got to give it to you, girl, you got game. <gasps> goodbye, baby, doom, 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 and where'd you go? Boom, 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 gonna go with your baby, no, boom, boom. Boom, you know you won't stay long, but boom, 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 but someday, baby, boom, 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 you ain't gonna trouble, boom, boom, for me, yeah, get any more, 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 and then the back is gone, goodbye, girl, better get gone, skip gone. <laughs> <laughs> what year is this song from? Uh, some, uh, I don't know, but he's an old man when he, uh -huh. and he was like doing an album with his nephew and his grandson, and it's good shit. You can get it on YouTube. R.O. Burnside, and it's he's got some killer album names. Like one of the albums called "An Ass Pocket Full of Whiskey." Uh huh. 
It's a couple blonde chicks with like cartoon blonde chicks with like short shorts with a whiskey bottle sticking out of their ass. And he's like an old guy with his like crusty white shirt. And he's like, oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, but that song is on an album called A Bothered Mind. R.L. Burnside, the album's called A Bothered Mind. Song. Good answer. The track is called Someday Baby. Yeah. We should all do a jam one of these days with two drummers. Dude. That's Andrew always been and Dustin. Yeah. But Fuck like yeah. we could do it. Do you guys still have a space? Yeah, we do. So you have enough room to put tr- two drum sets in there. Yeah, if we clean it up a little bit, we oh, definitely yeah. do. <laughs> but uh I've Ooh. never I've never have you Dude, ever there jammed are with two, two full there drums? are two drums kits in that room set up right now. Uh-huh. Actually, so I just remembered so. Yeah, there's two drum kits in that room uh. set up. So we should well, do maybe it. an April April Fools podcast. I don't know if we could podcast it really because what? it'd be at their space, be we don't even have enough mics well, do you, and shit to oh, is this, all li- this isn't live, is it? We could totally like just mic up shit and record some stuff and sit down and have some stuff. We could totally do it, make an after a whole day out of it. Yeah. We could. We could do a four twenty special in April. That's just a, a lot that's a lot of channels to uh do two drum sets. That is yeah, a lot of channels, but look yeah. at how many channels that snake has. I can't even count. No, but it's it, the board. It's that, the mixer, yeah. yeah that we got to... M- room really, mics, room mics. It'll probably be better with two drum kits, too. Room mics. Yeah, no, know. we'd have to go. We'd have to go, like, kick in room mics, basically. That's what we'd probably have to do. Yeah, we'd have to get but creative. Maybe not even, like, just like a bunch of, like, four or five room mics for everybody. No, you do this way you do. You do, like, each have a kick, a snare, and two overheads, and then a mic on each amp. Yeah. Yeah, that would be like the that would be the, the the like most difficult way. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that would be the best sounding way. Um All right, so you're going to play some uh Dobro next, right? Oh, yeah, I'll play it or what do you call it? What do you I'll, call it when you play it? Uh that that song that guitar is is a resonator. It's technically not a Dobro. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. But we all call it the Dobro. Yeah. What are you going to play for us? I'm going to play for the encore. It's the steel one, right? The yeah. steel body. Is it a single cone? Uh, yes. Yeah. Nice. And uh, it's got a lipstick pickup in it and uh-huh. a pickup under the bridge somewhere. It's cool. I think I'm going to play a tune call- that I wrote called Six Feet Down. I wrote it not too long ago, and I think I'm going to give that one a try. Tell us a little bit about it. Oh, it's... Uh... Oh, you know... One of those, huh? It's so brand new, you know. I like. I'm just getting like flirting with it, you know. <laughs> when you uh, write songs, do you write lyrics over like your like music and melodies that you got, or do you go lyric first? How do you do your uh, songwriting? Um, most of the time, it's like I got a guitar or song. It like comes I'm, after I'm jamming, and it's like all of a sudden I'm jamming on this thing, and I'm like humming it or like making growling to it or something and then uh-huh. put words to it uh-huh like so, you, a, a lo- so you could like write melodies kind of like just singing stuff yeah like yeah, that's yeah. what this song was more like that and like i was just riding my motorcycle for two weeks and as i'm riding my motorcycle i sing uh, this song in my head and you kind of like got I this got melody song. in your head and you kept like working on it yeah but sometimes it like it happens like right off the bat like this and like if they're both it's a short tune i might play you another one which came yeah, all at cool. the same time and that one I wrote in like 10 minutes. The second one, which I am calling Red Shoes. You know what? I'll play you two. How about that? I'll play you I'll Six play Feet Down, it. which is one that I that makes no sense, but it kind of does. I don't know. It's about death. It's, well, the name's fitting. It's a love song. It's a love song. And uh, the second one is... Deeply uh, in love. The second one was a quick diddly... About some dude looking for his girl, and he finds her at the hotel with the red shoes on, and he's all like, girl, where you been? He's, she's all like, I'm just looking to have some fun, man. Where you been? That's the whole story. The second one's like really like... There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty, uh, like it's like a casual encounter kind of song. I guess. I don't know. It's really but hard for me. To, good I've never. I, that was some timing. He showed up at the right time, right? Oh, or did? When it comes to my songs, I never really know what they're about until like two years after I write them. Yeah, it's neat because they. And then I'm like, oh wait a second, identity, this is what right? this song's about. I they have no idea what this song's about. And, yeah. 
That's in a, because at first I, th- I, I wrote it like saying like, oh, this dude's going down to the hotel and the bar in the hotel and the chicks at the bar dancing and having a good time and yada yada. But then I wrote the song and read the lyrics. I'm like, holy shit, his chick's a prostitute. So Fuck. Then, so then do you think there's something to spacing out albums then? So when you're recording stuff now, is it stuff you'd written a year or two ago? So it had time to grow and flourish and become its own That's kind of how things have been, but not on purpose. Yeah, would you prefer that if you had a choice? I think or I would like do you to like the aspect of the mixed album, maybe some old solid tunes mixed in with some fresh perspectives to I don't know. You know what, like whatever's clever. The the three way album was kind of a mix of old and new. But like I would like to like make a record that's all new, pretty fresh and see what happens. Yeah, well you just hop in the studio and write there on the moment. Yep, and then you kinda like when it's done, like the song kinda grows on you after that and you kinda well that's how it is for me. Like Will the you? longer I marinate I, 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 I mostly my lyrics are mostly bullshit all the time. Is it hard for you to let go of a song? No. No, you can get it to a point where it's finished, and you can get it down and, and call yeah. It good. And and if and if I think of a better idea, I don't really like think like oh this it, it's already done. Sometimes I you just, just go, do a Whatever, remix. I just do it this it, way now. Yeah, <laughs> it, for me, it's kind of like once you like record a song, it kind of crystallizes it. But until then, things are like I, yeah. they're constantly changing, kind of. Yeah. So there does come a point. I think you have to crystallize it. Yeah. Once once you record it, you're like. You know, I don't know. I just kind of end up doing that version of it. Is that how you do it? Some of the times. Do you change up your yes. some of the songs you've recorded? Sometimes, yeah. But, a lot like of song- lyric wise. No, not usually. You just stick to the lyrics usually, right? Most of the time, because it, it's yeah, it's not. It's, they're there. Sometimes, like sometimes, there's minor changes. Like only when, because some songs that I recorded. I mumbled the lyrics, and you might think, like, what is he saying there? If you ever listen to any of my music, you go, I don't understand what he's saying there. Well, it's probably because I didn't have lyrics for it, and I didn't tell the guys. And uh, I was just like, I was, and I make something up. Oh, it sounds like this. And Joel's like, oh, that was really cool. It sounded like, you, did you say that? And I was like, yeah, it's exactly what I said. Yeah, and so I started just singing that after. Oh, right on. Yeah. There's a couple of uh, just... Just you going for it, uh, takes on the on the album without like with missing parts of lyrics, and you just had to. On the EP, definitely. Yeah. For one example, is Crazy Legs. The, I had the first verse. The rest of the song was bullshitted in one take, and I didn't tell the boys. Mm-hmm. Do you record like, lyrics with the sheet in front of you? Or no. You, no, you no, <laughs> don't even use the paper. I will, for the album, I had some sheets in front of me just to like look professional, I think, or just like uh-huh. I'm gonna have it, but I never looked at it. So, you uh, know, I'm fre- I'm a fresh young buck. So I've done in, it like twice. In the moment kind of yeah. guy. I've got like two times to like leak off of. Yeah, when I, like, like last time I recorded, I, I had the sheet out when I was singing my my part. Was it helpful or was it a hindrance? Yeah, it was helpful. It for was. sure, yeah. It it's definitely helpful flow. if you have the words written down and you don't know the words. Yeah. Like, I would say definitely helpful. But when you don't have any words written down, you just got to bring them from somewhere, huh? Yes. Andrew's listening to this right now and go, that motherfucker. <laughs> That's what that is. The guys, and, you no, but the, and then there's other occasions where, Andrew. like, I actually have <laughs> a line written, actual words, and the boys think that I say something different. Like, another example in the album, the song So Long, there's a line where I say, where I sing, you're my boss. Well, and that's it's just a <laughs> it's just a clip it of a line. Uh-huh. And the boys came to me and finally said, "What are you saying there?" I told them, "Like, oh, girl, come on, get on. I need you when you're gone. You're my boss. Well, so get on." And they're like. I thought you said lick my balls <laughs> <laughs> every time. I thought you kept saying that, and they like finally like had the balls to go like, dude, can you? Are you saying lick my balls every time on stage? I'm like, no. Is that what it sounds like? like yeah. Hmm. I so said it you, once. On did purpose. you change it? No. I, <laughs> no. You just enunciated. No, I think. You- <laughs> I think every time I say it now, I just hear myself lick my balls, and I laugh inside. <laughs> That's a skill to hear yourself lick your balls. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the sound? How do we makes? get on that? I don't know. Let's. Uh, you want to play the tune now? 
Sure, why not? Let's do it. Let's do Signing it. off. All right. This hey, is, this is a good place. To, thanks again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Let's guys. Hear. Encore. Yeah. Thanks for coming out, man. Cheers, cheers guys. Cheers. cheers. That was cheers. a lot of fun. standard boys i call this one red shoes if i can play this it's fucking weird it's a semi 
baby and tell me where she gone I heading down to that hotel to see what's going on There she my girl with her red boots on Baby please come back home I said baby oh, where'd you been You know you've been gone so long so bad I don't wrote this song She said I went to this hotel to see what's going on Baby please come back home I said baby please come back home And she said no, no I won't take you back Say oh, now says where it's at Said so, why don't you go on home some more all right send us out thanks guys i'm justin james fortioni in here with tony and dustin at mystery school thanks for having me boys catch you later check out the three-way we got a facebook and a website and check out ghost town rebellion i'm in that band too thanks guys oh, yeah.